Okay, let's go with SEO from scratch video number three. We are talking all about content in this one. What we're going to cover is how to choose what content you should create, where to publish it, and how to optimize it for your target phrase. So if you've done your keyword research, you've got a target phrase and you need to make a page that is highly optimized around that target phrase. We want that page to rank as high as possible. So let's ask, what should we publish? Well, the answer to that is pretty easy. We should publish great content. We've gone over this already. Really good pages attract links. Links attract attention. Attention attracts more links. And you get the snowball effect going on. Now let me show you the value of traffic that great content can get in monetary terms. This is a screen from my Google Analytics. And it shows you the traffic for one of my most popular pages over almost two years. And you can see that that page has been landed on 314,403 times. But let's also consider the monetary value, the business value of all that traffic. If I go over to the Google AdWords keyword research tool, I've put in the term best designed websites, which is one of the phrases that attracts traffic to that particular page. And if I look down here, we can see that the approximate cost per click that people are bidding right now on Google AdWords for the phrase best designed websites is £2.27. That's approximately $4 per click. So we're talking about $4 per click for 300,000 visits for writing one piece of content. I can tell you that this article took me approximately three hours to write. So for three hours work, I have had to date 300,000 visits that are worth an awful lot of money. That's over $1 million worth of traffic on the open market. So great content is just incredible value for money. It's the best way that you can spend your time. So we need to ask, what's great? So here's some words for inspiration. Great content should be useful. It should be generous. Don't hold back. It should be really helpful. Newsworthy. Think, what would make people want to talk about this? Another great word is shareworthy. What kind of content would people want to share? What gives you a lot of value in a little amount of time? Is it unique? Is there anything else quite as good as this, quite like it out there on the market? Is it complete? Make content that's comprehensive, that seems to give people everything you need to know in order to do something, in order to make a decision. And also entertaining. A lot of the content that goes viral out there is just funny or fun or stimulating in some way. Now we'll look at where to publish. And we've really got four main choices in this. So I'll tell you each of these in increasing order of the amount of work that's likely to be involved. The easiest option is to optimize existing content. If you've got a page that's already there, if it's good, then you may just be able to change that content to make it seem more about the key phrase that you want to target. Next, we've got the option to create a new page on your existing website. You should also consider the option of posting content on other people's websites. And we'll go through the pros and cons of these in a moment. And finally, you could even take the option to create a brand new domain. So it could be a whole new website or just a microsite. So let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail. First, optimizing existing content. So on the plus side, optimizing an existing page is about as quick and easy as you can get. The page may already have existing authority. It may already have links pointing to it from other websites. And also, if it's on a domain that's already got links pointing to it, that domain will have authority as well. So you're not going from a standing start. However, if the domain authority is low, that may not be so helpful. Domains that already have a lot of links that are well respected actually can really give new pages a boost 
they can help them to rank more easily, but if your domain authority is low, that effect will not be so pronounced. Also, does the domain name contain the keywords that you want to target? If the domain doesn't contain the keywords that you're targeting, then you may find that it's easier to rank under a different domain. So how about creating a new page on an existing site? This will be quite a common tactic that you'll use. It's relatively easy. Obviously, you have to create brand new content, so it's not as easy as just optimizing an existing page. The domain will already have authority. However, the page itself will be going from a fresh start. So the page itself will probably need some links pointing to it, some new links, in order to get it to rank. However, that isn't always the case. Again, does the domain have low domain authority? If it's low domain authority, it may not be so much help. And again, do you have the keywords in that domain? Here's another option, which is to post on a third party site, to post on a site that somebody else owns. This can be relatively quick and easy, and we'll look at some examples of this in a moment. You can post on some really high domain authority sites. Sites like Facebook, YouTube, which are domain authority 100. And I can't tell you the number of times when I do my keyword research, when I see a result coming up in the top 10 where there are no links whatsoever pointing to that particular page. So it has a page authority of 1, yet because the domain authority is 100, that is appearing in the top 10. Another potential benefit is that if your content is likely to get seen by a few people, it could also get copied onto other people's sites. And that means also that any links that you've got within your content will also very often be copied across. Let me show you an example. Here's an article that I wrote quite a long time ago. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy some of the text out of the article. I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to paste that text right into Google with quotes around it, meaning that I'm only looking for pages that include that entire phrase. And when I hit return, look what happens. There's my page, it's the first page that was found, so it's coming out top. And Google's telling me that there are 11 results, which means that this content has been copied 10 times onto other pages. And here it's on a page authority 46 page on a domain authority 97 domain. And any links that I included within that document will have been included on these 10 other pages. So I've just automatically there got 10 other links pointing back to any pages that I link to. On the downside, creating content on other people's websites doesn't directly contribute to your domain authority. If you have links within that content that link back to your main website, then they will pass what's called link juice through, and that can be helpful. But it's not really directly building much domain authority for you. And any links that that content attracts will be pointing to that content building up somebody else's domain, not your domain directly. So as I said, you may be able to pass some link juice. And what we mean by that is value that pages get a certain amount of value from PageRank from Google. And then that value is then divided and passed through every link that's on the page. So if you can post an article on somebody else's site that has one link on it, and that link points back to your main website, then all of the potential link juice will be passed through from that other page back to your site. However, most pages will have dozens, sometimes more than 100 links. So the value of that link juice is going to be significantly diminished. And finally, you probably won't own the content anymore. If you post content on Facebook, it belongs to Facebook. And finally, there's option four, and that is to create a brand new website, a new domain. Now, on the plus side, you can look for an exact match domain name what we call an EMD. So if you're going for a specific phrase, it may be worth checking if your exact phrase.com or some other top level domain is available. 
If it is, then as we've seen, those exact match domains can get a really big boost in the search engine rankings. Additionally, if you link from this new web page back to your other main site, then that can give you one more linking domain. Although I would say that's probably a minor benefit. On the downside, of course, you're going to be going from a standing start. If it's a brand new domain that you've just registered, it will have no domain authority at all, and older domains find it easier to rank as well. Google likes to see domains that have been around for a while. It sees them as more authoritative. And again, any links that you manage to point to this new site, it's not contributing necessarily to your core site. And when we're thinking about trying to build the assets that we've got over time, there's a lot of value in concentrating as many inbound links as possible on one domain, because then that domain authority will go up. And as we've seen, high domain authority helps all the pages on that domain to rank well. And of course, this one, like we've said, is the most work. However, it's possible these days to register a new domain, register some cheap hosting, install WordPress with one click, get a template, throw it up. You really can get a new website live in an hour or two these days. So how do you decide where to publish? We've got these four options. Which one's best? Well, generally, I would say that the ideal is to publish on your own site wherever possible, because that's going to be building your domain authority. All those links are going to be pointing into that main domain and the whole thing will balloon. A good question to ask is, does the subject of this page fit naturally under my brand? And if it does, I would say maybe publish on your main site. If it doesn't, if it's not really appropriate, if it's not really relevant for somebody to land on there, to see your domain name, to see your logo, to see your other navigation options, if that's not really going to help the visitor, then you might consider publishing elsewhere on a different site or creating a new site. Another important question is going to be, do you need other what we call convincing content in order to make this page credible? And what I mean by convincing content is stuff like about us, testimonials, case studies, FAQs, and a contact page, maybe an address, and other contact details. If somebody arrives on this page and it has none of those things, will that reduce the credibility of the page that you want to create? So if it's appropriate for that page to sit on your corporate website or your main blog, where that kind of information will be there, then go ahead and do it. But overall, we just have to ask ourselves, is the likely return going to be worth the effort? Because sometimes an exact match domain microsite will pay dividends. We've seen lots of fairly low authority sites that happen to have a perfect match of the search phrase in their domain name ranking in the top 10 when they really have no right to be there. Now, I can't say how long that is going to be the case, but right now it's certainly working and it's been working for a long time. So although it's more work to set up a new website, the return for that work may be greater if it's actually going to make it easier for you to rank. Because you have to consider if you were to create that content on your existing site that may have low relevance, fairly low domain authority, and none of the keywords in the domain name, then you're going to have to do a lot more work to promote that content to get people to link to it. Because that's going to be the only way that it's going to start ranking high. But you have to take all the ranking factors into account. If there are no exact or phrase match domains already in the top 10, and if the pages that are ranking there aren't too strong, and they're really only there because, for example, they may have the phrase in their title tag and in the path name of the page, then you may be able to top that list by just creating a new page, setting the title tag, setting the page name correctly, including the phrase a few times in the page and just getting a few links. But you'll only know that by doing your competitive analysis as part of your keyword research. You may also want to consider third-party sites in order to get a quick start. If you're starting from fresh, if you own no websites already, then publishing on other people's sites can be a really good way to start getting traffic. So let's look at a few ways that you could publish on third-party websites. 
There's a number of answers sites out there. You've probably heard of Yahoo Answers. There's a few more, Wiki Answers, All Experts, Answer Bag, and one at Metafilter as well. It may be worth checking out some of these. Now the answer sites aren't really for publishing articles as such, but you could find people who are asking specific questions. And if these pages are already ranking quite high on the search engines, then why not consider going and posting your own answer to those? You could even be sneaky and post your own question and then answer it yourself using a different account. And some of these sites will let you put links in that link back to your next step content. And some other ones that you've almost certainly heard of, Twitter's a really good one. So if the search phrase that you want to target is appropriate and you want to put some effort into this, it may be worth looking to see whether there's a Twitter ID that matches that search phrase. If so, you can register that ID. And as long as you're fairly active, you follow some people, they follow you, and the account actually gets some activity, then I have seen occasionally Twitter account pages ranking up there in the top 10. Facebook pages, obviously, that's a great one. Facebook is also Domain Authority 100. And if you can create a page, it's facebook.com slash your exact phrase. Make it useful. Again, you're going to have to put some work in to put some activity on there as well. But Facebook can also help you really get a, a jump straight into the top 10. YouTube is fantastic. I'm a big, big fan of video. Publish on YouTube. Set the title of your video as the search phrase that you want to go. Make the video useful, make it informative, and at the end, tell people to go on to the site where they're going to get the next information that they need. Remember, you can also use more than one of these tactics at the same time, if it's worth the effort. Guest blogging can be amazing. Don't underestimate the power of writing a blog post on somebody else's site, because blog sites are very often looking for good, fresh content. And it can be so much more effective to write a really good blog post and to put it onto a site that's already getting seen by thousands of people than it is to publish it on your own site that isn't going to get seen by anybody yet. So if you're trying to build up your own site or your client's site, then yes, you should be adding good content onto there. But in order to get eyeballs coming to you, then do consider posting content on other people's sites, other people's blogs and making sure that there are links back pointing to the site that you want to promote. Because remember, it's all a cycle. Although those eyeballs are going to be going to your blog post on somebody else's site first, if you can then lead them on to your next great content, and they'll follow that link through, and if that content is good enough, then they will click the Facebook like or the tweet. They will link to it themselves. They may bookmark it. They'll share it with other people. And that's how the whole snowball effect can start. Press releases can also be useful. You can go to sites like PR Web, and if you write a good press release and that press release contains links, then that content can get picked up by multiple outlets and it can get published in dozens or possibly even hundreds of places. I've done this to good effect. Forums is another one, kind of similar to the answers sites. You can go onto Google and type in URL colon forum. So you're looking for pages that include the word forum in their address and then your phrase. Look for people who are already asking the question that you are proposing to help them resolve. Go onto there, register there, give them a good useful response and then point them to a useful resource. And then finally, I would also recommend that you look at Squidoo. Again, it's a high domain authority site. Squidoo is a site that will let anybody register and create your own page. It's very, very easy. You need no technical skills whatsoever, and you can create links pointing back to other sites. And with any of these approaches, I do recommend that you consider finding ways to get a couple of links pointing to these third-party pages that you create as well, because that will help to raise their authority significantly. Any page, even if it's on a Domain Authority 100 site, if it has no links pointing to it at all, it's still going to have Page Authority 1. And very often what you'll find is, even with just one or two or three links pointing to that, that Page Authority can jump straight up to 45 or 50. So I'm just going to give you a couple of rules that will apply 
whatever kind of content you're going to create. The first one is link on. Okay, we're not talking about link building here for the purposes of building authority. What we want is traffic. We want eyeballs. We want people to follow those links. We want them to see your content. And most importantly, we want them to click through and see the next content that you want to show them. Because eventually we want them to take some kind of action. We want them to join your mailing list or buy your product or register. So the most vital thing, whatever content you're creating, wherever you're creating it, is to create those links that will lead on naturally to your next step content. So if you're creating a step one page, what we call a problem page, like how do I stop my husband snoring, then at the end of that article you need to have some obvious, clear, useful next links that you recommend to your readers. So once you've read this content, you may then need, or you may like, to read this other stuff. So that's when you link on to content that talks about various solutions that might be available, one of which may be yours. And when you've got a page that compares various solutions, there should always be a link through to your solution explaining why it's particularly worth looking at. And that's how the whole tree model works. When people come to step one content, you then link them on to step two content, then you link them on to step three content, and then they're being exposed to your propositions. And then all you need to do is finish selling. The second rule is to be non-commercial. When you've got this step one content or step two content, don't make it seem commercial. Don't try and sell on those pages. And this is really important because, remember, your step one and two content will eventually link to your selling pages, to your commercial content. But this non-commercial content, the helpful advice pages, the comparison pages, the how do I deal with this, or what are my options for that, or what are the alternatives to the other, all of this content, if it's non-commercial, it will get links more easily, because it's really helpful, because it's really transparent. People are going to be a lot less likely to link to commercial content that's obviously trying to sell something. So you create these pages that aren't selling. They're just there to help and to advise and to help people answer their problem or choose between different solutions. And that's the way that you can eventually link them through to your content. So when you've got this step one and two content, that can attract some really good links because it's really helpful, really useful. It's not trying to sell anything. So that'll get a lot of value. It'll get a lot of link juice pouring in. The page authority will go up. And then when you create those links pointing to your other content, that link juice will get passed through. But most importantly, the traffic will get passed through because the pages also build trust. So people will read the content, they'll like it, they'll be grateful for it, they'll thank you for it, and then at the end, because they now trust you, they will be more likely to follow those links through to your commercial content eventually. So let's look at a bunch of ideas for content, and I've got a lot to share with you here. First, you don't have to be a creator. All you've got to do is add value. So you don't have to know anything in particular. You don't have to be a domain expert, particularly on day one. Just find different ways to add value. So how can you do that? Well, one is think of yourself as an editor or a journalist or a host or a curator. You can collect information from other places and arrange it to be more useful. So think about things like top 10 lists. Think about the five most influential people in this area. And if you do that, why not do interviews? Why not approach people and say, can you give me 20 minutes of your time on the phone? You ask them some interesting questions, ask them about their successes, their failures, what they've achieved. Get them to talk about themselves. Everyone likes to talk about themselves, right? And then you can write that up as an interview. And if you've got a famous name on there that people are searching for, and if the interview content is new and unique, which it will be, then you could have some great content on your hands. Also invite guest posts. This may not be so easy if you're starting afresh, but it can be flattering for people to be approached, to be invited to write a short article about a certain topic. You don't have to be the creator. All you are is the editor and the host. Also collect things like top tips, how-tos, case studies. You can host surveys or polls. So get other people to submit the content, get comments going. 
That's what we call user-generated content. How about just reporting and commenting on the news in your sector? Follow some RSS feeds, keep an eye on what's going on, and be the first to get in there and make a comment. Or when some new technology comes out, be the first to write a really practical, useful how-to guide on how to use it. How about doing some research? Do some original research. Do a test. Analyze some numbers in some area where you have some knowledge and expertise and publish that because research is really useful. People like to read it. People like to know that they're keeping on top of the latest intelligence. So wherever your expertise is, maybe do a little bit of research there. Beginner's guides are great. Do a 101 beginner's guide. Don't assume that everybody who's going to be reading your content will have anywhere near the same level of skill or expertise that you have. I'm also a fan of writing detailed product reviews. So if a new product or service comes out in your sector, write a good review about it, or even better, do a video review. So I've advised clients who have stores to do different kinds of video reviews in order to stand out from the crowd, where you've got loads of shops or e-commerce stores online that have the same products at the same price with the same stock photograph. Do something different. Get the camera out and video yourselves opening the box, touching the product, playing with it, saying what's good about it, what you like about it. And that is going to be so much more engaging than the same dull description that people will find elsewhere. And if it's interesting, if it's funny, if it's entertaining, then you may find that it attracts links as well. You can also post the same video on YouTube and get the little bit of reference back from YouTube as well. Case studies can also be really powerful, particularly if you sell advice or consulting, that kind of high-level service, then you can write up case studies that describe this is the challenge, this is what we did, and this is the result. That's the format. This is a situation, this is what we did, and this is the result. Okay? What you don't do is say, this is what's so brilliant about us. You say, the client was faced with a challenge because they had to do this, yet that. And what we did was we worked together over a period of couple of weeks, and we analyzed this, and we discovered that something. We put this into practice, and then here's the numbers that show how successful it was. That's a classic format for a case study, and it makes you look really good, but without blowing your own trumpet. A few more ideas for content. So a bit more generally, I want you to give as much value as you can. Don't hold anything back. And I like to think of the market as being like a herd, and I'm not being insulting here. If you imagine a great big herd of something like wildebeest sweeping across the savanna in Africa. And you are one of those wildebeest. It's very tempting for us to look back and say, well, yeah, I don't know much. There are people who know more than me. Or when I look back at what I knew a year ago, it seems so stupid. Okay? But you need to remember that the whole herd is moving along. There may always be people ahead of you on the path, trailblazers the people doing the cutting-edge stuff. But there are always going to be people behind you treading the same exact path that you're on. And they may only be a few steps behind you, or they may be quite a way behind you, right? The whole herd is moving, and your job from your unique position within the herd is just to help the people who are behind you on your path. Don't worry about the people in front of you. You can learn from them. You can read their research, you can comment on what they're doing, but your job is to help the people who are following on behind you. And I find that thinking like that really helps me get over the fear of not being accepted and just helps me just to have fun writing what I want to write and sharing it with other people. Some people say, well, if I give away my knowledge, isn't that somehow going to cannibalize my business? And I don't think it does. And here's why. I think there are two types of people who can come and read your content. There's one type of person who isn't a prospect, okay? They don't really need what you offer. They aren't going to sign up. They aren't going to buy. They don't have the budget or the pain or the urgency to become a customer. So those people are never going to commit. So if you give your knowledge away to those people, 
And even if they go off and use it for themselves without paying you anything, so what? What have you lost? Nothing. Because one day, that person may suddenly think, oh no, now I suddenly need this product or I need this advice. And who are they going to think of? Who's going to be the first person in their mind? It's going to be that great content that you gave them, where you showed and proved what you can do and the value that you can add. And then there's the other type of reader who comes along and reads your content and they do need the product or they do need the help and they need it now. And they've got the budget and they've got the urgency. And then those are going to be the people who do buy, who click through and say, yes, add to cart or yes, send me this free report. I'm going to type in my email address. And there's really nothing in between and you haven't really got anything to lose. The people who really need what you're offering, the premium thing that you're offering, they are not going to read that content and then go away and use it themselves without becoming a buyer or a customer. If they really wanted to do that and really wanted just to get the stuff for free, then they could probably find that stuff somewhere else in a similar capacity online. But you've got so much more to gain by giving away your content, by sharing your expertise, by sharing your knowledge, by sharing how wonderful and generous you are, than by hoarding it. So don't hold back on your content. Really give out as much as you can. Always be trying to give away 75% of the knowledge that you have. Because the more value that you give, the more value people will perceive you as having. I had a very interesting experience once with a guy who was a good copywriter. And he contacted me because he'd written an ebook, or he'd written part of an ebook all about how to write copy for ads. And he sent this to me and I read it and I absolutely loved it. It's called the Copywriting Black Book. And I emailed this guy back and I said, this is amazing. You know what? You should give this away. You should give this to everybody. This will get spread around. People will love this thing. And he said to me, I can't do that because this is about two thirds of the book. To which my response was, Okay, you've just told me that. I didn't know that, and no one else is going to know that if you don't tell them. Give them this two-thirds of the book, and if they love it as much as I loved it, they'll want to come back to you and buy the whole book. So I don't know if he did that, but it does reinforce the idea that the more value that you can show and prove, the more value you give, the more people will value you, and the more value you will seem to have. So finally, I'm actually going to talk very briefly about on-page optimization. When you create this page, how do you make that page seem like it's saying it's about the phrase that you're targeting? And we really just have a few areas that really matter on this. If you get into really high-level SEO in extremely competitive markets, on-page optimization starts to matter more. But I'm just going to give you the stuff that you really need to know. Firstly, the page's title tag is very important. So let me show you one. Here's my introduction to writing copy for the web page that we looked at before. If I hover over that tab there, it says introduction to writing copy for the web. That is the title tag of the page. And if I do view source, then you see this line here. It says title tag introduction to writing copy for the web slash title. And the title tag is probably the most important element in a page that tells the search engines what the page is about. The next will be this part. It's the path, it's the file name of the page. And this is copywriting slash writing for the web. The next one is, is the phrase itself used on the page? So let's look at this page. This is my sales page for Save the Pixel. And this page is optimized around a few terms, but the major one is probably web design ebook. So if I do find on this page and put in web design ebook, you'll see that it appears right here in the main title and a bit lower down again, 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 and again down here, and again here near the bottom. Now, this is really important. If you want to make a page appear to be about a phrase, use that phrase on the page. Use it near the top, somewhere in the middle, and near the bottom, the end of the content as well. 
don't try and stuff the page with the same phrase over and over again. Be natural. Make it natural, readable English. I can't stress that enough. If you try and over-optimize a page, it could actually work against you. Another one that matters as well is if you've got any images on the page, try and use your phrase in the alt text of those images. That's the alternative text. So whether you're building your websites by hand, or you're using WordPress or any other site building software, everything will give you the option of putting alternative text. And this is the text that describes what the image is for readers who can't see the image. So they're used, for example, by uh, text-to-speech readers, which are used by blind people. It describes, it says image, and then it reads out the alternative text. This is an image of. And one of the types of readers that you'll find that can't actually see an image and tell what it's about is search engines. When the Google bot or any search engine spider comes along to your page and it finds an image, it can't see what that image is really about, but it can look at the alternative text. And if you've got an image on your page that also says it's about the same phrase, that does matter. It can also be useful, although of relatively less importance, to use your phrase within headings on the page. And also don't forget internal links. When you've got links from within your own website, make sure that that phrase is used as the text of those links. So that's my really brief guide to on-page optimization. So we've covered what kind of content you should create. You should create great content. We've looked at four different places where you can publish that content. On your own site, or just changing another page, or on third-party sites, or creating a brand new site and which option you choose is very much going to depend on how strong your competition is and how great the reward is going to be for getting the traffic that you're going for. We've looked at a range of ideas for the types of content that you can create even without being a fantastic writer or having to create that original content yourself. And then we've looked briefly at on-page optimization. So in the next final video of this series, we're going to look at how you can go about promoting your content so that you can get lots of people coming and seeing it.